Hi, I'm Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix Guides to Adobe Premiere Elements and Adobe Photoshop Elements. And here we are in Adobe Premiere Elements. Now, one of the features in Adobe Premiere Elements that can be a little confusing is a feature called rippling or timeline rippling. One of the things that makes it a little confusing is that timeline rippling itself is a challenge, but in Premiere Elements there are some unique features to it that aren't uh, present in other video editors. Let me show you what the basics of timeline rippling are. In timeline rippling, when I add a clip to the timeline, I'm just going to move this off to the side here so we don't confuse. When I add a clip to the timeline, say right here, and insert it, all the other clips move off to the right to allow for that clip to be inserted. When I remove that clip, everything moves to the left to fill in the gap. That's the basics of rippling. It's like ripples in a pond. One thing you do affects the other things. But what's unique about Premiere Elements is that rippling behaves differently on Video Track 1 and Audio Track 1 than it does on the other tracks. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let me put this back in its place so we can see the behavior. I'm going to drag a clip to Video Track 2 right here and I'm going to overlay it on an existing clip. So you see I've got an existing clip here. I'm going to drag this so it overlays. Notice what happens. I get a gap here just as I did before where the clip goes in. Everything moves off to the, to the right. But watch what happens. If I select that clip and delete it, the clips do not move left to fill in the gap. In fact, if you have no clips on Video Track 1, you even have the option, if I double click and right click, to delete and fill in the gap. On Video Track 2, I won't have that option. It'll be grayed out. Only Video Track 1 will ripple your video clips to the left, okay, to delete and close gap. Let's Command Z to undo all that. What happens if I add a clip here, though, and I'm going to just trim this? that does not overlay a clip on Video Track 2. If I drag a clip down here, am I going to get that split and insert? No. None of the other tracks split and insert because this clip is not overlaying a clip. In other words, let me show it to you one more time. If I take a clip that's existing on the timeline and I add another clip that overlays it, then I get the split. Otherwise, I don't get the split when I add additional clips to Video Track 2. Now, what happens if I want to add a clip here and I want to overlay another clip, but I don't want to ripple my timeline? In other words, I want to add this clip here and I want to add it right here on top of that clip, but I don't want that split in there. Let's undo that because we don't want that to happen. Control Z or Command Z. And I'm going to drag a clip down, but I'm going to hold down the control key or the command key on a Mac. And when I drag it down here, notice that I don't get the split. Now my clip has overlaid and replaced the clip that I dragged it on top of, and my timeline did not split. So, in other words, I overrode the ripple. Now, why is that? When does that come in handy? Well, that comes in handy here when, for instance, I'm putting together a slideshow and I've got a lot of clips that I'm adding down here and I have my soundtrack from my music already on the soundtrack. If I were normally to add a clip here that overlaid another clip, I'm going to split my soundtrack and that drives me crazy. I don't want my music breaking up as I'm working. So I'm going to grab, let me find a clip that's long enough here. There we go. That's one that's long enough. And rather than drag it into that space and have it split my soundtrack like this, I'm going to hold down the control key on my PC or the command key on my Mac, drag down the clip, and when I let it go, it sits in there and does not split my soundtrack. So as I'm building it, for instance, I have my music and I'm just trying to pace a slideshow to my music, I can do that without breaking up my music track all the time. I can shift things around on here in the video one track. I can trim things and notice that as I do, the trimming I'm doing on this video one and audio one track as I lengthen a clip or shorten a clip or add a clip is not affecting any other tracks.
Every video editor does some sort of rippling, but does it in its own unique way. For Premiere Elements, the solution that Adobe has come up with is that rippling is fully functional only on Video 1 and Audio 1. The only time rippling is apparent on the other tracks is when you drag a clip onto an existing clip, and I'm going to do that here by dragging narration onto the soundtrack. Then it splits, unless you hold down the controller command key. And if you remove a clip from any track other than Video 1 and Audio 1, the timeline will not snap shut. It will not fill in the gap. That's a feature unique to Video 1 and Audio 1. Now, if you want to know all about this feature and all of the features, every feature that's in Premiere Elements, be sure to check out our many tutorials and tips here on MoviePix.com. And if you want to know everything about everything about this program, be sure to check out our books, the MoviePix.com Guides to Adobe Premiere Elements and the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements and Photoshop Elements together. They're available on Amazon.com and, of course, right here at the MoviePix store. I'm Steve Grisetti. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again real soon.